The brand new Lumix G9 Mark II is a stellar new photography-centric camera that is absolutely packed with features, and they packaged it in this very familiar body of the S5 II. So here I have my Lumix S5 Mark II X, and as you can see, they look almost identical. The grip is deep and very comfortable to hold, and the knobs on top I find to be very tactile and satisfying to use. Additionally, the flip screen carries over from the S5 II as well as the EVF on top, which was kind of expected. The only real major difference between this camera and the S5 Mark II when it comes to the body design is just the logo on front that says G9 Mark II. So the body may be borrowed from the S5 Mark II, but it is packing a brand new sensor as well as engine. So this is a 25.2 megapixel Micro Four Thirds camera, and it's Lumix's first Micro Four Thirds camera that has phase detect autofocus built in, which is super exciting. It's also touting a feature called dynamic range boost, and I'm gonna go ahead and read this because I don't wanna say it wrong, but basically what it means is that the camera is able to capture two analog signals. One is tuned for high ISO, and then one is tuned for low ISO. This accomplishes a composite image with higher saturation and lower noise when you're shooting in more dramatic lighting scenarios. This works at base 100 ISO when you're shooting photos, and then it works at 500 ISO when you're shooting in vlog for video. And this feature is backed and supported by that new engine, which is allowing it to perform up to two times faster when processing these images. So the G9 Mark II has the best autofocus system that Lumix has ever devised. It has multiple different detection modes, including animal eye tracking as well as motorcycles. Additionally, they did clean up the visual experience from the S5 Mark II, which was admitted a bit overwhelming. They made it look a lot cleaner in the G9 Mark II. These features should come to the S5 Mark II and the S5 Mark II X pretty soon in a firmware update, which is super exciting. Also, the detection software has been improved, meaning that it should be much more reliable even when you're shooting in tougher lighting situations, like if, let's say, your subject is backlit or maybe it's a bit dark. So maybe sometimes that 25.2 megapixel doesn't seem like quite enough, when you're taking your photos, you need a little bit more information. Well, you do have the option of going into their 100 megapixel handheld mode. All you gotta do is go into the settings and turn it on. And now instead of shooting 25 megapixel photos, it's stitching together four photos to give you four times the information. So now you're shooting 100 megapixels, which is pretty amazing. Now, obviously the G9 Mark II was built with photographers in mind, but that does not mean that Lumix shied away from the video specs in this camera. It's able to record 4K 10-bit 420 at 120 frames per second, as well as 4K 60 422 10-bit, which is amazing. Also, they somehow snuck in 5.8K open gate, which is pretty stellar. I love open gate and I'm glad that they shoved it in this camera. Really the downside with this camera when it comes to video is that there's no fan like you have on the S5 Mark II. Now, that makes a lot of sense because this camera was built for photographers, not videographers, so it does make sense, but you can't record as long continuously. But I'm okay with that because I'd rather have all the video options in here rather than losing them just because there's no fan. So I think they did a good job. So bonus feature for those of you that decided to stick around to the end of my video, y'all are my favorite. Leica and Lumix have an alliance and Leica did something that's pretty cool and totally exclusive to the G9 Mark II. You can actually shoot on the Leica monochrome picture profile in this camera, which is honestly insane. Something that I definitely was not expecting to find in this camera. But that's not the only thing. You also can shoot with these lenses that Lumix have been putting out, which are approved by Leica. So they're Leica approved optics and the Leica picture profile in the G9 Mark II. So technically, you're shooting a Leica camera. That technically, I, I understand that it is wildly different and they're wildly different sensors, but it is pretty cool that you are able to shoot with the essence of Leica in this camera for under $2,000, whereas the Leica M11 is upwards of $9,000 dollars without a lens. So that is pretty incredible. Now, if you would like me to compare the picture profile in here, the Leica monochrome with an actual Leica monochrome camera, definitely let me know in the comments. It's going to be hard to get, but if enough of you guys want it, I'll try to get my hands on the Leica camera so that I can make that video for you all. So this camera has a lot more to offer than what I can cover in this video, like pre-burst shooting, eight stops of stabilization, or even real-time LUTs. So I honestly think if you're a photographer looking for a camera, especially a Micro Four 
thirds camera, I would highly recommend looking at the G9 Mark II. If you guys enjoy this video, definitely drop me a like. It does mean a lot. I hope that you all have a fantastic week and I will see you all in the next one. Take it easy, guys.